Right, so as I continue working on my refined sketch from my, my rough thumbnail from the proving ground, I'm finding the black shapes I want to keep, right, and refining them. So the ones that are missing now are the wings. I could do these all as separate layers as well. The advantage of doing them as separate layers is then I can play with transform tools to, to play with the proportions. First, I'm going to do what I can just to copy the shape I like. Now, the reason I'll always draw these on index cards first, really small, is because for a lot of artists I know, when you draw small traditionally, you know, by hand, it captures kind of an energy to your mark making that's hard to reproduce when you're either drawing larger or you're drawing digitally. Because we tend, when we draw digitally, to be a little stiffer because we're using an interface, you know, like a tablet or a mouse or a trackpad. And that makes us stiffen up more than if we're just using a pencil. Also, when you're drawing digitally, even if it's at a lower resolution, you tend to zoom in and you get stuck in details rather than just the energy of the whole. But if you can do your thumbnail as something that's kind of quick and energetic, then as you refine it, you try to recognize the qualities of that that you want to keep. And then that can be, it can lend that kind of energy to your design. And you might find that it works very differently for you, but that's what I've just learned from my experiences. And I was mentioning before, the other reason I draw small is because even just the width of the pencil lead makes a big difference when you're drawing small. And as I refine it, I get to choose, well, which side of the pencil lead do I want to fill in with a black shape? You know, is it the inside edge or is it the outside edge? And all of that makes a big difference. So now as I come in with these wings, which are the most organic element, the one that I can play with the most, I want them to kind of look like wings, kind of look like a cape, kind of look like flames to go with that kind of demonic um, intimidation that the flying tigers tried to have with the, the painted mouths on their planes. And now I can just use my paint bucket and fill these wings in. But because they're on separate layers, I can duplicate the wings and then play with Option Command T. So maybe I want them, I want to warp them and I want to push it a little bit closer to the back like that. But in the negative space, I really want to get that kind of spine shape. So it's like you get the tiger stripes and you get the wing all together. So that's why I like doing my refined sketches digitally because I can use all the advantages of compositing to make these shapes as effective as possible. And then I have to ask myself, well, do I like that better? And I can put on a white background. Just with edit fill with white, right? Do I like that better or do I like that better? And I actually didn't think I would, but I think I like that better. And then I could do that with more refined shapes, but I'll be able to keep tinkering with it in that way um, with Illustrator.
But I like kind of the goofiness of it. So that's going to be my refined sketch. So what do I do? I'm going to turn off the background so it's just black shapes. And then I'm going to crop it. And then I'm going to save this as my first assignment for requirement, which is the refined sketch. So I'm going to say export as a PNG because I want that empty space. And it's going to be the refined. So Carl, assignment for refined sketch. The first of three requirements for this assignment for assignment four. So remember, your refined sketch is choosing which of your thumbnails you want to refine and make better and then filling them in with black shapes so you have a clear plan. So all I did was just use what my camera gave me because this is not something we're making for printing. So as long as it's at least 72 pixels per inch, you're fine. So I'd aim for around 8 by 10 by 72 pixels per inch. Because it doesn't need to be super detailed. Yes. It goes into assignment four. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I just saved that PNG. I have my assignment four folder. And I'm going to put that in. And now that you know what approach you're using, you might find inspiration. So this is an inspiration. But you see how that looks like clip art? <laughs> you know, because it is. It doesn't have a lot of personality to it. Mine is different. And it's going to show more personality, my point of view. Even if you would personally prefer a different approach, that's why you make it your personal patriotic symbol. All right, so now I take this refined sketch and I'm going to post it into Canvas. Not here. I'm going to post it where I say next into assignment four. And I'm going to post it as a new reply on top of my inspirations. So let me just do that quick. And then I'll label it. So that's our next step today. It's making a refined sketch and posting it into assignment four as our first requirement. And I did this in the morning class as well. I'm just going to open it up so I copy the same verbiage. Try to be very clear. Oh, wrong class. So assignment four you can find from assignments as well, but it's going to be where you post your final logos instead of just posting your thumbnail sketches. You get credit for both of them. Three points for the logo, one and a half points for the proving graph. All right, so here, this is what I posted, right? My instructor demo example, refined sketch with clear black shapes. As a PNG without a background, just so you really get a sense of it being just black shapes, not black and white shapes. Sometimes students make that mistake. And even though my black out of Photopea is kind of a dark brown, just because it wasn't selecting solid black, that's fine. You still get credit for it if it was a dark blue or anything else. The important thing is that it's one, one pixel color only. So I'm going to go ahead and merge these layers. Option, layer, oh, merge visible. I'm going to do another one.
And it's going to show you the kind of subtlety you can work out in your refined sketch so you don't have to worry about it when it comes time for your vectors. So I changed the wings just a little bit. And I ended up choosing this one where that kind of back curve of the wing also helps to describe the uh, the spine of the tiger a little bit better. But now I'm double, I like how even the spacing is there. So I'm going to go back to this one. Now this is my refined sketch, right? So that's why it's nice to have options. So I'm going to save it with the background turned off. Oh no, the, uh, which one? Yeah, I like this one. So I'm going to save it with the background turned off like this as a PNG. Export as a PNG. I don't even need to save it as a PSD unless I want to go back to it, which isn't a bad idea. So Carl, assignment for refined sketch. And I'll call this video, you know, making careful decisions before settling on your refined sketch. Paying attention to the energy of your own mark making. I'll also save it as a PSD in case I want to see the difference between what I did with the wings again. So there's the PNG. That's the one I'm going to use. And then the PSD. Where did it go? Went to assignment three. Okay. So now I can close PhotoP. Once you have your refined sketch, you're done with it. And I'm going to update this because I changed my mind, which you are allowed to do as you improve your, your idea. You make sure when I see them side by side, maybe because it's part of creative problem solving, I need to get your input because you're going to be spending some time, like all of next class, turning these into vectors, even though they're just black shapes. Even though they look so similar. God, I can't decide. Now I like the first one better. So, quick vote, guys. To show you how input matters. Raise your hand if you like this one. Raise your hand if you like this one. All right. Yep, so that was the one I was I just updated to. So good. I'm glad. So I'm going to go with that one. Sometimes we just look at stuff for so long, too, that we become kind of blind to it. So now I've got that posted. See how much time we have. This is now the refined sketch that you are going to bring into a vector program for the first time. Not vector shapes in a raster program, but a dedicated vector program. And the dedicated, dedicated vector program we're going to use is VECTR.com. It's linked right here in the assignment. And it is annoying because it will ask you to log in, but it's worth it and it doesn't cost anything. You can just use an email address. You can use your school email address if you like. And then when you're logged in, it will remember, when you go to My Designs, it will remember the things you have worked on. So here you see some past ones. Right. Just to show you what a vector program looks like. We're going to bring our sketch in, and then we're going to build our vector shapes on top of it. And they're going to come in as organizational path layers. All right, 
And then when we double click our shapes in vector.com,